everyone and welcome back to the deep dive. Today we're going to be, well, diving deep into therapeutic HIV vaccines. It's something that's been getting a lot of attention in the medical world lately. Yeah, it's really exciting stuff. And you know, we all kind of know about vaccines that can help prevent diseases, but what about vaccines that could actually help people who are already living with a virus? Right, like that's what we're looking at today. So we're using our source material today, a really detailed fact sheet from the NIH all about these therapeutic HIV vaccines. We'll try to break it down in a way that makes sense, you know, without all the super technical jargon. Definitely. And just to be clear right from the start, we're not talking about preventing HIV infection here. <laughs> these vaccines are designed for people who already have HIV. The goal is to help them manage the virus, maybe even get to a point where it's basically in remission long term. So it's a whole different way to think about how vaccines could be used, right? It's not about stopping you from getting sick. It's about helping you control a virus you already have. Where did this whole idea even come from? Well, for a long time, the main way to treat HIV has been with antiretroviral therapy or ART. Right, ART. Exactly. And it's incredibly effective at suppressing the virus. People on RT can get to what's called an undetectable viral load. So that means the virus is basically gone, right? Undetectable. It's a really good thing, for sure. Undetectable means the amount of virus in their blood is so low, standard tests can't even pick it up. Okay. That means the virus is suppressed, and it also means the person is much less likely to transmit HIV to someone else. Gotcha. But it doesn't mean the virus is completely gone. HIV, it's a tricky virus. It can hide in certain cells, kind of like these reservoirs. So even with RT, it's still kind of lurking in the background. Exactly. And if someone stops taking their art, the virus can come back and it can come back strong from those reservoirs. That's why as it stands, people with HIV have to take art every day for the rest of their lives. Wow, okay, so that makes this whole therapeutic vaccine idea even more interesting. So how would a therapeutic HIV vaccine actually work? I mean, like on a biological level. Okay, so think of it this way. RT is like the police, right? Keeping the virus under control. But a therapeutic vaccine, that's like training a special forces unit within your own body. Okay, I like that. And this special forces unit, it's specifically designed to target and eliminate HIV. I love that analogy. So instead of relying on medication from outside, the goal is to boost your body's own immune system to fight the virus. Exactly. These vaccines, they basically expose your immune system to certain parts of HIV. Like it's teaching your body to recognize and attack the virus better, you know, more effectively. Okay. The hope is that this leads to a stronger immune response, one that can keep the virus suppressed even without RTIT, you know, something that lasts. So it's like researchers are trying to get your immune system to do what RT is doing now, but in a way that's more... I don't know, sustainable? Like your body takes over? You got it. And there's been some really promising research already. Yeah. There was this uh, vaccine, VAC-A4X. They tested it in a clinical trial back in 2012. Oh, yeah. I think I've heard of VAC-4X. What was so special about that one? Well, VAC-4X was interesting because it was designed to target four different parts of HIV. Oh, wow. The idea was to, I guess you could say, give the immune system a more comprehensive training manual. Like, hit it from all angles. Makes sense. So if your immune system learns to recognize multiple parts of the virus, it's less likely to be fooled by mutations, right? Exactly. And even though VAC4X didn't completely cure HIV, it did have some pretty cool results. Like in some people who got the vaccine, the amount of virus in their body actually went down even after they stopped taking ARTI. Wow. There wasn't a cure, no. But it showed that this kind of approach could potentially lead to suppressing the virus for a long, long time. So it was like a sneak peek at what might be possible, even if it didn't fully hit the mark. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. It was a really important step that gave us a lot of information and helped pave the way for future research. That's great to hear. So it sounds like there are two main things researchers are going for with these therapeutic vaccines. First, to slow down how fast HIV progresses and help people with HIV live longer, healthier lives. Right. And then second, the big one, achieving HIV remission, like basically a functional cure. You got it. And those goals might seem a long way off, sure, but the progress we're making is seriously impressive. That's amazing. So where are we at right now? Are we close to having a therapeutic HIV vaccine that's available to people? Not quite yet. Yeah. There's still a lot of research to be done and we're still in the clinical trial phase. Right. I can imagine it's pretty hard to develop a vaccine for a virus as complex as HIV. It's not like, you know, the flu, is it? It's definitely not easy. Hmm. HIV is a moving target. It mutates really quickly, and that makes it super hard for the immune system to keep up. 
So it's like you're trying to hit a moving target, but the target is also changing its shape and color while you're aiming. Huh, yeah, that's a great analogy. And to make things even trickier, HIV actually attacks the very cells that are supposed to fight it off, the T cells in your immune system. Oh, wow. This weakens your body's natural defenses, so it's even harder to get a good immune response going. So it sounds like researchers have a tough job ahead of them. It's like a it's like a constant battle. It really is, but the scientific community is making a lot of progress. One area that looks really promising is research into those viral reservoirs we talked about before. Oh, right. The places where HIV can kind of hide, even if someone's on RT. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> If we could figure out how to get rid of those reservoirs or even just control them really well. That would be huge. It would be a total game changer. So how are researchers trying to tackle that? I mean, what are they actually doing? Well, they're exploring a bunch of different strategies. Okay. One idea is to try and reactivate the virus that's hiding in the reservoirs, like wake it up so the immune system can see it. And then, you know, a therapeutic vaccine or other treatments could target it. Oh, I see. Others are focusing on developing therapies that can go directly after the cells that are harboring the virus, like just destroy those cells altogether. So it's kind of like a two-pronged approach, right? Flush the virus out and then have a way to neutralize it when it comes out of hiding. Exactly. And then there's this whole other approach that's super interesting. It involves gene editing. Gene editing, like CRISPR, the, the stuff that's been in the news with the potential to cure genetic diseases and all that. That's the one. Researchers are looking at how to use CRISPR to actually edit the genes of immune cells and make them resistant to HIV. Whoa. Imagine if we could engineer immune cells that HIV can't even attach to. Wow, that would be incredible. That sounds almost like science fiction. It does, right? Yeah. But this is the cutting edge of HIV research right now. There are so many possibilities opening up. It's really amazing to think about what all this could mean, not just for people living with HIV, but for, you know, everyone. It's true. A successful therapeutic HIV vaccine, it could change everything. Think about the stigma that's been attached to HIV for so long. Yeah, it's hard to even describe how much stigma has affected people with HIV. It's impacted their relationships, their access to healthcare, everything. It has. If we can develop a treatment that really controls or even cures HIV, it could help to break down those barriers. It could help reduce the fear and discrimination people with HIV have faced for, you know, decades. It's like a chance for society to reset, to rethink how we approach and think about HIV. Exactly. And there's the economic impact too. The cost of treating HIV over a lifetime, it's huge for individuals and for the whole healthcare system. A functional cure, that could ease that burden and free up resources for other important health issues. It's really incredible to think about all the ways a single scientific breakthrough could have these ripple effects. It's not just about medicine, it's about actually changing lives and reshaping the world we live in. And that brings up another important point. Mm -hmm. As we think about a future where HIV isn't a lifelong condition anymore, we have to consider the ethical side of things. Oh, that's a good point. It's not enough to just find a cure. We have to make sure everyone who needs it can get it. Right, access and equity have to be top priorities. We need to think about how to make these treatments affordable and available to people everywhere, no matter where they live or how much money they have. And we need to be sensitive to how a cure might affect people who've been living with HIV for a long time, like emotionally. Yeah, that's important. A cure could be a huge relief for some people, a real joy. But for others, it might bring up complicated feelings. They might need help to process what it means and what they've been through living with HIV. So it's not just about the physical cure, it's about the whole person, their emotional and social well-being, too. Exactly. And let's not forget about prevention. Even if we do find a way to cure HIV, it doesn't mean we can stop doing everything we can to prevent new infections. No, of course. Yeah. Things like pre-fee, pre-exposure prophylaxis, and education about safe sex practices, those are still essential. So a cure doesn't mean we can just forget about prevention. We need to use everything we have to finally end this epidemic. I agree. And it's important to remember that even with all the progress, finding a cure or even widespread remission, it's going to be a long and difficult process. There will be bumps in the road. So what are some of the biggest challenges for researchers as they're trying to develop this therapeutic vaccine? What are they struggling with? Well, one of the biggest, as we've said, is how fast HIV mutates. It's constantly changing, so it's really hard to develop a vaccine that can work against all the different variations of the virus. Right, it's like trying to hit that moving target, the one that's always changing shape and color. Yeah, exactly. And then there's the problem of those reservoirs. 
where the virus can hide from the immune system. Right, we were talking about those earlier. Those reservoirs are a major obstacle. Even if a vaccine can suppress the virus at first, it might not be able to reach those hidden pockets. Oh, I see. So the virus could come back later on. Researchers are working on ways to get around this, but it's not easy. So the immune system basically has to be on guard all the time, even if a therapeutic vaccine is working at first? You got it. And that's one reason why researchers are looking at combination approaches. They're combining therapeutic vaccines with other treatments that can attack those viral reservoirs directly. It makes you wonder, with all these challenges, how do researchers stay motivated? It must get discouraging sometimes. It's true. There are times when it feels like an uphill battle. But the scientists working in this field, their passion and dedication are just amazing. They're driven by this desire to make a real difference for people with HIV, to help end this epidemic once and for all. It's important to remember that behind all the science and research papers, there are real people whose lives are affected by HIV every single day. Exactly. And it's their stories that drive scientific discovery and innovation. It's about remembering the human side of it all and recognizing that each step forward, no matter how small, brings us closer to a world where HIV isn't a threat anymore. That's right. We've talked about a lot today, from how therapeutic HIV vaccines work to what they could mean for individuals, societies, the whole world, really. Yeah, it's been quite a deep dive. It has. And before we wrap things up, I want to leave you with something to think about. What's one thing our listeners can take away from this? What's a question that might make them want to explore this topic even further? It really has been fascinating, like learning about the science behind these vaccines and how they could change things for people with HIV. Yeah, for sure. And I think what really stands out is just how complex this virus is yeah. and all the challenges researchers are facing, you know, trying to stay one step ahead. Totally. It's like HIV is a master of disguise, always yeah. mutating, always evolving. It's not an easy opponent. Not at all. Yeah. But even with all the hurdles, the progress that's been made so far is pretty amazing. And what's really inspiring is that spirit of collaboration you see in this research. Scientists from all over the world are working together, sharing what they know, pooling resources. That's awesome. All working towards the same goal, you know, finding a solution to this problem. It really shows you what we can achieve when we put our minds together, you know, like the power of human ingenuity and working together. It really does. And it reminds us how important it is to keep investing in scientific research. These breakthroughs, they don't just happen overnight. They take time and funding and consistent support. It's true. We hear about these amazing discoveries, but we don't always see the years of hard work and dedication that go into them, all the research, all the setbacks. Exactly. It's a long game, you know, a marathon, not a sprint. And there are going to be bumps along the way for sure. Yeah. But the payoff, the potential benefits, they're huge. We're talking medical advancements, social benefits, economic benefits. It's massive. It's so much bigger than just a vaccine. It's about changing people's lives, about transforming society, about creating a world where people don't have to live in fear of HIV anymore. You said it perfectly. Yeah. And as we get closer to that reality, to a world without HIV, I think it's so important for us to have these open and honest conversations about what that really means, what it would look like. Yeah, I agree. It goes beyond just the science. It's a conversation we need to have as a society. We need to be ready for the changes in attitudes, in how we see things, maybe even in policies that could come with a major breakthrough in HIV treatment. Exactly. And that starts with education. We have to keep raising awareness about HIV, debunking those myths that are out there, and just promote understanding and compassion. It's about creating a space where people feel comfortable talking about HIV, asking questions, getting informed without feeling judged or discriminated against. I couldn't agree more. And we also need to recognize and honor the experiences of people who have been living with HIV, sometimes for decades. They've been on the front lines of this epidemic, pushing for better treatments, fighting for their rights, challenging the stigma. Right. They're the ones who've been living this every day. Their stories are so powerful and they deserve to be heard. Their resilience and strength are amazing. And I think it's important to remember that even if a therapeutic HIV vaccine doesn't completely cure the virus, it could still make a huge difference in their lives. You're absolutely right. Just being able to slow down how the disease progresses, needing to take less medication every day, lowering the risk of transmission, those are all big steps forward in themselves. It's not about like all or nothing. Every bit of progress we make in this field is a win for people living with HIV, and for all of us, really. That's beautifully put. And I think that feeling, that sense of hope and optimism, that's what we should all hold on to as we keep exploring HIV research. There's so much potential out there. 
And while we still have work to do, the journey itself is a testament to human innovation, to our determination to solve this problem. That's a great way to put it. This has been a really insightful deep dive into the world of therapeutic HIV vaccines, and I hope our listeners are leaving with a better understanding of this topic and, you know, a feeling of hope for the future. To everyone listening, thank you for joining us on this journey. Remember, knowledge is power. The more we understand about HIV, the better prepared we are to be part of ending this epidemic. And that's it for this episode of The Deep Dive. We'll be back next time with another fascinating topic from the world of science and technology. Thanks for listening. Thank you.